Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back from a long day of work and I finally get to talk about this. Arcane Rising is out of print. I saw the news at like, whatever, 3 o'clock or whenever it was posted. And uh, I was honestly very shocked by the fact that it was Arcane Rising that would go out of print. Now, here's the thing. Uh, well, you know what? I I'll stop. I'll stop. I won't give my opinions until I read the article. Arcane Rising Unlimited is officially out of print. Legend Story Studios will not be reprinting Arcane Rising again. A final small wave of Arcane Rising is making its way to US and EU distributors now and is expected to arrive in local game stores during the first half of December. If you want this product, we recommend that you contact your local game store to pre-order. As with all flesh and blood cards, cards that were originally printed in Arcane Rising may be reprinted in future sets, and that's why they show a picture of Arcanite Skullcap, because it is confirmed to be printed in an upcoming set, as you can see right here. Now, I will give you my opinions, and then I'm going to speculate. Oh my god, speculation's so much fun, and we can speculate all we want with regards to this. Okay, so first of all, I would not have expected, if you came to me and you were like, DM Armada, there's going to be another set rotation. I would not have expected that set rotation, that out-of-print status for Unlimited, to fall in 2021. That, to me, is really surprising. I did not expect 2021 to be the, the year that more of these things, like, cycle out of print. I would have expected, like, 2022 to be when these things go out of print. But... That's not how it works, and it does kind of make sense. Again, logistically, it's just not feasible to have multiple sets in print, even though there are multiple printers. I know there's uh, Japan, there's Belgium, and there is the U.S. printer, but we actually haven't seen anything from the U.S. Cardamundi printer, and that is a bit suspicious, uh, because it was supposed to be Tales of Aria that came from the U.S. printer, and uh, that turns out not to be the case. It was Belgium, I think, that actually did the print run. So, uh, even that I think that perhaps even contributes more towards these things having to be out of print so that you could then print something else, right? Because these, um, these you know, Cardamundi in general prints all types of games. It prints Pokemon, it prints uh, Magic the Gathering, it of course prints Flesh and Blood as well. And if you would like to reserve your spot, I'll just put it that way, if you'd like to maintain a spot at these printers and uh, maintain it, you're going to have to keep, you know, having something be printed. But... If you, if you have so many things being printed that eventually you just don't have room to print something new and eventually these things are going to have to rotate out of print and that is what we see Arcane Rising doing now. I would have also not expected if you were like, DM Armada, something's going to be out of print and uh, it's going to be and then you just put a blank. I would have filled that in with Welcome to Wraith. But then again, I would have done that for like Crucible of War too. And yet here we are. Uh, the thing that's going out of print is is Arcane Rising, and believe it or not, it's kind of weird. You probably know this. Arcane Rising has like been the harder of the sets to actually get your hands on for um, the past couple of months when it comes to Unlimited. So it's kind of interesting that this one rotates first. I will say this too: it's been printed for the better part of the entire year. Uh, I guess the better part of a year, because I think it started being printed last November. It's printed for a full year, Unlimited, I think, right? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but it's been printed, and the the market has purchased up its fill in a lot of ways. Now, of course, new players coming into the game do want to get their hands on the uh, cards within this set. And uh, as far as things like Arcanite Skullcap that you can see on the screen, and Command and & Conquer, or Art of War, those cards are highly sought after and highly played in um, you know, classic constructed blitz, even in like casual formats. And so those cards are going to need to be reprinted. Okay, they're going to need to be reprinted. And that's why they put this right here. And that's why they showed us a picture. And they showed us this cheeky little, this cheeky little sneak right here down there, which we're going to speculate on here in a minute. But the commons and the rares, those are also very important. And I'm very curious to see over the next month or two or five or however long um, how uh, those commons and rares will now basically go from card fodder to like some number of value, like some value, like a one cent card may actually have more you know, value. I mean, that's obvious. I mean, it's very obvious, but it's something that perhaps if you've just been constantly just dumping 
commons and uh, your rares, for example, from Arcane Rising or from Crucible of War even prior. If you were just randomly dumping those cards because you just had too many of them that you needed them out, all of a sudden some of those may have a little bit of value. Will they have a ton of value? No, I don't think they will. And this is, I guess, speculation, if you will. I don't think, like... Random Common X from Arcane Rising, Ravenous Rabble, for example. I don't think that's gonna like shoot up into like the stratosphere, but I do think it probably goes from like a two cent card to like a 15 cent card in that respect. It just increases in value, um, you know, in this little short term and perhaps, you know, going forward into the, into the long term as well. But I will say if those, those cards really do shoot up in popularity and value, Legend Story Studios is just going to reprint them. They're just going to put them into a set so that people can get uh, their hands on it. And that's, again, why we see Arcanite Skullcap. And it's also why we see this little thing down here with the legendary symbol. And that is a first edition legendary symbol. And then the code EVR154. Uh, 2021 Legend Story Studios, by the way, it is... It's okay for it to be 2021 and have a set release in 2022. That's what we saw for like Arcane Rising originally. It's like uh, they coded it 2020, 2019. I think they coded it 2019 and then it released in 2020. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but what 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 is that? What is that? EVR 154. EVR is the set name for what this is going to release in, and I thoroughly believe this is referring to the Everfest. Carnival in Aria. It was the second thing that popped into my head. The first thing being the word Evergreen. Just because Evergreen is a card in Tales of Aria. And uh, Everfest is a, uh, a very popular festival and carnival that rotates around, just like moves around Aria constantly. So I have some... Uh, I have some beautiful materials for you to look at. Let's jump over to that. All right, so here is the absolutely fantastic lore book for Flesh and Blood. Looking fantastic. By the way, so is this playmat. Boom, playmats. Hey, by the way, I sold out of all of the first batch of these, like 50 of these playmats, and so I ordered more. If you want one of these playmats, you can buy one. Uh, info is in my Discord, link in the description if you want to buy one of these playmats. They are fantastic. You can pick one up yourself. But this is the Everfest Carnival, and this is the section on the Everfest Carnival. And essentially what this is, is a roving, uh, this is like super cool. It's a roving carnival that moves around. Um, it is like generations old. Uh, and uh, there's these families that sort of have poured into it for generation after generation. And uh, like commit to these acts of, uh, you know, like strongman acts or, you know, acrobatics, dancing, song, that sort of thing. And this is like the biggest event. It is a giant traveling circus. It's the size of a small town. It boasts hundreds of tents and attractions. It's a staple and it's been a staple for absolute centuries. Uh, traveling from village to village, growing larger with every passing decade. Some of the oldest families in Aria are part of the Everfest. Their ancient traditions evolving into a number of um, uh, into number among its most popular acts. As I absolutely butcher the text here, but it's really exciting because within this idea of like this giant carnival, we have the capacity to see and support all classes and all heroes because again yes while Arya has sort of been um, shut off from the rest of the world as far as the lore is concerned within this carnival they mention things like over here illusions and illusionists um th this whole little text section talks about that strong men guardians you can basically just fit whatever you want in this carnival and just kind of get away with it. You basically have carte blanche with this giant carnival. And oh, by the way, uh, where is it? Where's the picture of the meeps stealing the thing? Look, look, at the carnival, there are little meeps stealing things from people. And look, there's a meep right there stealing stuff along with the pirate Scarlet on the playmat. But no, it's it's super exciting. And it ties in perfectly to the, uh, the, the core sets that we've had this year. Uh, this idea of perhaps this being the theme of the supplemental set that we'll be seeing within, oh, I don't know, the next month or two. This tying into Monarch and tying into uh, Tales of Aria, being set in Aria, 
uh, possibly having all of these different characters that are attending the festival. Uh, very, very possible that we just get a ton of cards within a carnival set. I think it's going to happen. That is my huge speculation. I'm not the only one that thinks this, uh, but that was my first reaction when I thought, oh, it's probably the Everfest Carnival, is reading this section of the book. Uh, by the way, there is like a text floating around version of this. If you want to see like a full text version of this, I don't know where that link is. I got to find that. Uh, but if I do know where it is, I'll put it in the description so that you can read through the lore book uh, itself because it's a really pretty lore book. It's got some great illustrations uh, and it's got great lore. And that's the point of a lore book. Uh, it's got great lore. And that brings us back to this main screen with Arcanite Skullcap. And I want to talk about this. Yes, they say they're going to reprint um, staple cards. And I think the, the most sought after staple cards from this set are things like Arcanite Skullcap, which is hugely and widely played um, in competitive like tournaments, just absolutely everywhere, right? This, this is a staple piece of equipment like Fiendal Spring Tunic is a staple piece of equipment. And if we look at the precedent that LSS has set, when they recognize that something is a staple, they reprint it multiple times, right? So we had uh, Fiendal Spring Tunic Alpha, Unlimited, then we had Crucible of War, First Edition, and Unlimited. And they're setting a precedent there to do the same thing with Arcanite Skullcap. We have Arcanite Skullcap and Arc, um, First Edition, and then uh, Arc Unlimited, and then, in EVR 154, first edition, and EVR Unlimited, conceivably when that is printed. So whatever set this comes in, whether it is the supplemental set that's coming next or a core set next year, no matter what, they are saying with this graphic that they are going to print this most likely in a non-foil version like they did with uh, Fiendal Spring Tunic and Crew. They're gonna print this like that in first edition and then again in unlimited. So players can get access to some number or some copy of Arcanite Skullcap. I think they're also gonna do the same thing with Command and Conquer. LSS is smart enough to know and to look at this list of, uh, you know, like deck lists and like most played cards. I would be surprised if they didn't have like a database compiled from their own data that says, hey, yeah, what's the most played card? Mm, let's look at that really quick. Oh yeah, it's Command and Conquer. We should probably reprint that to get it into players' hands. And technically we can't necessarily do that by printing Arc forever. So let's reprint it in an upcoming set so that people can actually get their hands on it and the price of uh, Command and Conquers really, really drops because of it, which is great if you want cards for play. And when a card is this much of a staple in decks in Classic Constructed and Blitz, you want this card to be available for players. Like, I think we can all agree that the more available it is, the better it is for players, right? Exactly. So if they print that in a first edition set, which also gets an unlimited reprint, the same thing happens that we saw for Tunic. Uh, and that's gonna happen for Skullcap, and I think that's gonna happen for Command and Conquer as well. Again, you'd want the same thing to happen for a card that has a little less play, but still a lot of play overall in Art of War, not necessarily as hugely prevalent as uh, Command and Conquer, and then you like look at the other Majestics within Ark's set, and you say like Red and the Ledger is really cool, like people want that. Uh, but there's a, like a lot of the the sort of class Majestics that people don't necessarily gravitate towards as much. All this being said, I think it's fantastic that they are going to reprint, and that they just straight up said, hey, while we are saying that this set is going out of print, we're also showing you a picture that this is in the pipeline. And this is one of the two biggest cards from this set that did indeed need the reprint. So I'm pumped about that, pumped about the Arcanite Skullcap getting the uh, the reprint. And overall, I mean, like, it's weird to see the set go out of print before WTR, but if they are going to print these staples in, like, the next supplemental set, then I don't think we're going to feel this huge hit or worry uh, but it'll be interesting to watch as we go forward. So that's the news of the day. And unfortunately, I, I didn't get to like just drop the bomb like right when everyone was uh, was like talking about it. Because I, I have I've had my like own opinions for the past few hours. But those are my opinions and those are my speculation. I think we're getting an Everfest set. And I think this proves it right there. So get hyped. I'm hyped. Let me know in a comment below what you guys think. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching.